In 2008, the fantasy author Brandon Sanderson wrote a book called Warbreaker, but to everyone's surprise, he posted every single chapter of it online raw as he was writing it. You can still check it out today, and when you read it, you can definitely see how things change chapter by chapter in response to feedback, but also just story development. I love this concept of writing or learning in public, and I want to try it too. But the question is, did this work for him because he's already a fantastic and experienced author? Or would this approach also be viable for someone much more average, like someone who hasn't written a book before ever? Well, that's what I want to find out. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I plan to write a book in semi-public using, what else, Obsidian. Here's my idea. I already have a system in place for using Obsidian to take my notes and build upon them and watch structures emerge and somehow narrow those things down into a coherent short form piece of content, like a video or a presentation or a blog post. But I've never done that with anything longer. I've tried to write a book many, many times, but I've never actually stuck with it long enough to succeed. So I want to give this a real go this year. And I got to say, it's pretty daunting to admit that I'm trying something like this in public. I also want to see if Obsidian as a tool is good enough to use for publishing long form content. Hopefully at the end of all this, I'm going to publish a book. I'm going to self-publish it. I'm not sure exactly how yet, but I figure I'll take you along with me on the journey. The book is definitely going to be about obsidian or note-taking. I'm not entirely sure of the angle yet, but those are definitely things that I have a lot of already. Let me show you what I've got. So this is a vault that Patreons already have access to, and it's tentatively titled Obsidian Playbook. Don't hold me to that title because I don't know if I'm going to stick to it. But I think step one of this entire process is going to be getting everything I've made about Obsidian into this one vault. And I'm most of the way there. First, I've got a video database of, I think, every video that I've created. I think I might be a little bit behind on some of them. I'm using some data view front matter already, just so I can search for them later. I'm not actually sure if I'm going to do that, but I'm just trying to anticipate what I'm going to need. So I have the video embedded here and some timestamps as well. Now, this is going to be a problem because I have a lot of videos and I haven't really put in a lot of actual text. So Obsidian doesn't do great with text. And so perhaps that's something that I need to start with. So I also have this video database note where I have links to everything. And I do also have a data view query here. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it yet, but at least I can see what is out there. As you can see, not everything is tagged appropriately. I started this before I settled on the convention for tags and front matter and such, but I mean, that's just the reality of it. I also included some text notes here, and I'm using the structure from a course I just released, Obsidian for Everyone. And I don't have all of the videos here, but I do have some of the things that I wrote about in there as well as some workflows for Obsidian. I've got things like, you know, Obsidian releases that I've written about. It's not complete. It's just the ones that I wrote about. And basically anything else that I already had as notes in my actual vault, I have kind of moved over to here. There's a lot of empty stuff here. Some of these are just placeholders and I'm not really sure how everything's going to fit in together yet. I'm just kind of putting everything in here and seeing where I am. I also have some stuff on other tools. I'm not entirely sure how far I'm going to go into other tools, but I did already have some notes, so I might as well put them here. Now, the interesting thing is that after all of that, after importing everything that I've got, or almost everything, I'm pretty close, I already have 25,149 words. This is the thing that makes me realize like, hey, I could actually finish a book on this. Will it be a good one? I don't know, but it's gonna be a book. So this is what I've done so far. Now for things that I'm planning to do. I think the second step is going to be processing all of these videos and actually getting them consistent. 
in terms of the front matter and the tags. And possibly I need to maybe pull in the transcripts or something or write what I said in the video so that I have a little bit more to go on. A lot of these are also just not tagged, so that's something. I need to put front matter in these and maybe link all of these timestamps. I also need to actually create notes for each of these plugins because they don't exist. So I only have some community plugin notes, and honestly, they're not even that fully fleshed out. I think DataView is the most fleshed out because like I have examples. These are from my personal notes as well as from Patreon stuff, but I've actually talked about way more plugins than I have notes on. I think the core plugins I'm pretty sold on. I kind of really explored this and wrote a lot for the course that I just did. I'm not including the videos here, but hey, at least I have screenshots and that. So I just need to cross-reference these videos, have text to cross-reference to the actual plugins. And also because my stuff is so video and screenshot intensive, I mean, this is a tutorial kind of thing, so those things normally are very media intensive. I'm also exploring what it might look like if a book that I write isn't actually a book. like. What if it's not actually a physical book? What if it's more of an interactive experience? Maybe, is it possible that I just publish something using Obsidian Publish and leave it at that? I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it. I'm not even thinking of the commercial side, but just the idea of exploring a different form of publishing is really exciting to me. The third thing that I want to do, I also want to install plugins like Excalibrain because I think I'm going to need to be able to look strategically at the entire structure. So I'm going to need Excalidra, enable that, and also install Excalibrain because I could look at the graph view, but I've always found this not really that useful. Like it's nice when you're starting out, but when you really want to see more nuanced connections, it doesn't really work that well. Like for example, the change log is linked to everywhere, but you know, that's not really useful at all to me unless I'm trying to see my progress. Instead, what I really want to use is Excalibrain because I think it'll let me explore linkages between nodes and spot gaps more than the graph view would. Step number four is going to be to follow my interest and create the notes that make sense at the time. Now this is the point where I'm not sure that this is going to work for long form stuff because it just seems very meandering and lackadaisical. I know that this works in my main vault and when I follow that approach, I just come up with a bunch of um, moments of serendipity where because I have such diverse topics in there, it's almost impossible to work on one idea without it colliding with another and I really love that. But I don't know if maybe I need something a little bit more structured in this instance. I guess we'll see. Step number five is going to be coming up with an outline for the book based on the notes that I have and then starting to put it all together and maybe strategically filling out some notes. One plugin that I'm thinking of using for this is called Longform. I, I haven't really dug into it yet. I think this is going to be a little bit later on in the process. But the plugin long form is supposed to be really good at writing like novels or I guess longer screenplays or something where there are specific scenes. For the moment though, I'm thinking of using a plugin called incremental writing. Now I have used this plugin before and I really love the idea of it, which is that instead of writing something from start to finish, it might be easier to write a little bit at a time on many different notes and then just trying to increase the entire body of knowledge. And that way you're not starting from scratch, you're just like rearranging building blocks in the end, which sounds awesome. The reason that I stopped using it in my main vault is that it just got to be too much of a hassle to prioritize things. I have different aspects of my life. Like I have work stuff, I have personal stuff, which now is also like YouTube stuff. And then it became to be too much to think about like, which one is more important to me right now? You know, something for YouTube or something for my personal life, like things like that, that I didn't feel like making a decision on all the time. 
but I think it might actually work for something like this because everything in this entire vault is going to be about a single project. This is one case where maybe having a separate vault for it might work in my favor. So how this is going to work is that I can open up the incremental writing plugin and I can, let's say, open the queue. Right now there is no queue and there also isn't anything on it. But this queue is going to be stored in this queue folder, which I've set to be system IW queues. Now this queue is going to be a list basically of everything that I want to work on. And then I'm going to add note to this queue. That note has been added to the queue with priority 34. Next rep is said to be today. Okay, let's add something else. So let's add the video database and I want to add this one as well. And I'll add to queue. Now, when I go to the queue, now there should be two notes. I'm not entirely sure how the priority is assigned. I think it's just because it was added later. So hopefully with the incremental plugin, I'm going to be able to have a single repository for everything that I want to work on and prioritized as well if I want that. And then go through the list and just work and write as much as I want or as little as I want and then move on to the next one. I want to stress that this is not a recommendation for the plugins that I've mentioned just yet. I'm just giving you a sneak peek of what I'm going to be trying out. As an example, I was already thinking while I was recording this video that the spaced repetition plugin, while geared primarily towards flashcards, can also actually have some sort of an incremental writing-like experience if you use it to remind you of notes rather than of questions or answers. So that's something that I'd also like like to investigate. So how good is Obsidian at writing long form content? I have no idea. I know that it can be done, or at least I've heard that it can be done, but there aren't many resources for how to actually do it in practice. Or if I've missed any, please leave it in the comment below because I would love to see what authors are doing with Obsidian that I don't yet know of. I'm also wondering, this is a good time to explore alternative formats to the traditional book. Like, could you have a book that is more of a choose your own adventure and would that be more interesting than something that has an enforced order of reading from a to z i don't know i'm hoping to find that out and i'll keep you updated as i go thank you for watching a la semaine prochaine